Rob always wanted to be a soldier. It's something that runs in our family. And I think another important factor was Rob's sense of appreciation for the freedom and opportunity we have in this country. Rob was full of energy. He enjoyed being very active. He enjoyed challenging people a little bit. Always on the move, pulling chairs over to counters and tables and climbing up and getting into things. We never really knew what to expect. One day we'd have the tuba, and next day we'd have a pommel horse in the garage, which is always something new. Rob was an amazing leader, uh, probably one of the best leaders I ever had. He led not necessarily always by the spoken word, but by doing, by showing. So I could look at him and say, you go take care of that because here's the deal, and snap. He would, you know, focus in, things would happen. When I needed to count on him and call on him, always there. He was a go-getter. If, if, he, if he couldn't figure out how to do it, he would. Special Forces was written all over him before he even got out of high school. I saw Rob being kind of a seeker of values. Uh, Rob was really fascinated with Hemingway's idea of a code hero. The idea that you, know, you can be destroyed but not defeated, grace under pressure, being that out, outward leader was something that he really took to heart. He took his job 100% uh, serious. From what I saw, he loved what he did. His ability for language was, was uh, off the meter. Very capable of communicating with the locals and, and they loved him for it. You know, he's always pushing himself to, to know more and to be the best. Uh, we went up to a village way up north. He jumped on the horse and he played with the, with the Afghan. Riding back and forth in the little herd. Robbie was flying across the meadow when he came across a tree and he literally had to throw his hands up in the air and lean all the way back, just like seeing TV, but it was a pretty awesome moment. The epitome of what, you know, being a Special Forces soldier is, is to be able to win over the hearts and minds and, and really be able to do that, and he did it to the fullest extent. And as we moved up that night, uh, we ran into two obstacles before we got to the objective. Something wasn't right. Moving into the valley in, in a uh, tactical formation. I think the hair on everybody's neck was starting to stand up. We heard Allah Akbar screamed out. They turned out to be like ants coming out of an ant hill. They just started coming out all over the place. And that's when all hell broke loose. I could hear the element in the front in contact. Then my element, we were split into almost three groups. Robbie at this time, he opened up. Immediately I, I see him charging uh, a PKM position. Robbie kept going at it and we saw guys die. We were engaged to our left, our front, our right. There were 40 of them and you know, basically eight of us. The next thing I heard was Captain Cusick. He came out over the radio, I'm hit, I'm hit. Just shouting um, at the top of his lungs. You know, Robbie continued to, uh, to to be up in the front, taking the fight to the enemy. I heard three distinct booms, which were grenades that Robbie threw. I saw Robbie's muzzle moving. He kept engaging and engaging and engaging. Because of the flash and the fire, the amount of fire that Robbie was putting down, it drew a lot of the enemy's fire to him. Basically carried Captain Cusick another 10, 15 meters to, to a better area that we could regroup, have better fighting positions. And uh, that's when I started, hey, Bravo, Bravo 2, where you at? Bravo 2. The battle continued from all, all night long. And Robbie is laying on his back. I got up, said Robbie's hit, and ran to him. Staff Sergeant Miller. We tried twice. We tried dragging him. We tried picking him up. Staff Sergeant Robert Miller. We trained for years for stuff like this. And I gave him pick my buddy up. Staff Sergeant Robert James Miller. Obviously, I'm very proud. I, all of us wonder, can we perform the same way and, and keep our head and do what we have to do in an extreme situation like that? When I heard that he had sacrificed his life for others, that did help us a lot in dealing with the grief that we knew that his death was not in vain. He loved his family. He loved his friends. He loved the work that he was doing. And the way that he died was how I know he would have wanted to die. Still hard, still miss him every single day. It took me a very long time to get over. Things like that shouldn't happen to people like him. The Medal of Honor for Rob, to me, is awarding his character. Uh, it was an outgrowth of his character that 
created the opportunity for his actions. That was in Rob already. It represents the gratitude of the country and the fact our, our son will become part of the written history of the United States is a moment that I'm not sure I appreciate adequately yet. Some people are like comets, they come in, they light, light the sky up, and then they're gone. And it's hard to lose him, but it was what he wanted to do. And I don't think he would do anything different.